Hey, hey, welcome back to Don't Run My Scissors. I'm Kelly, your favorite deep driving lawyer, mom of twins, four crazy rescue dogs, rescue cat, and rescue guinea pig, who likes to craft in her spare time, is now studying for her certification test for ASL interpreter, and is trying to train for Iron Man. If you're new here, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It sends me a message. It boosts my serotonin and my self-esteem. And if you are a returning friend, you already know the crazy you're in for. So grab a drink, sit on back, and let's have at it. Okay, so this last week, I, um, well, you will never know it by the number of whips I touch. I kind of lost my stitchy buck. I was like, meh. So, um, I could have worked on whip go numbers. I didn't. It wasn't pulling towards me. Um, I just kind of... Honestly, I focused on work. I had a lot of work stuff to do. I had a lot of calls to make. I had a lot of things to do. And I um, I tackled that. The other thing that I did that was um, a little scary. So one of the things that I promised myself when I was looking at, like, even where I would do my internship hours for my de sign language degree um, is that I would... Hold, please. Is that um, I would take more chances, that I would say yes to things. Um, you know, obviously not stupid things, but like if I had a chance to interpret something, even though it may be out of my comfort zone, I would say yes. And I did that. And I did that often. Um, and it, it ended up being fantastic. Um, and so I, this last week, I decided to, um, I had some really good conversations with some people and two things came out of this. One is I put, um, I actually put in my resume in for two different jobs. Um, one with Wayne County, one with Oakland County, both are for referee positions. So think best way to, to describe a referee is like an assistant judge. Um, Wayne County is working with family court, um, doing a lot of divorce, initial things, child support, custody change stuff. Um, so it would be a fantastic job. Um, their pay grade is a little bit lower than Oakland County. That's fine. Um, but I wouldn't, it would be, doing the same, a lot of the same stuff I do now, but from a different vantage point. Um, but I'd have a state, a steady paycheck. I'd have a pension. I'd have health insurance, um, like good health insurance kind of thing. Like, and so I put in for it. I don't know if I'll get an interview. I don't know. We'll see. The other job, though, is through Oakland County, which is the county I live in. It's also a referee position. I will be shocked if I get asked for an interview on this one. I will be honest with you. It's a little bit of stretch. I don't have a ton of juvenile experience as a solo practitioner. Um, as a former prosecutor, like when I worked in the prosecutor's office as an assistant prosecutor um, back in law school, I handled the juvenile cases. I handled some of the abuse neglect. Um, it is honestly where my heart is. Like I, because I feel like that's where you can really make a difference with a family. Um, so I did prepare for that job. That is like my dream job. I'm not even gonna lie. It's Lizzie, Lady, no, no. Um, so I put in for them. It would mean a huge change for my family in a lot of good ways. Um, so please, please, please send prayers and thoughts and all the good jujus um, that that can happen. And if those don't help, but if neither of those happen, that God puts me where I'm supposed to be. I think that's the best way of putting it. I don't know how to, like, I get it if you're not religious. I'm just hoping that I'm not ignoring doors opening that I need to step through. 
And I would like to see those doors keep opening um, in a good way. The other thing that I read, I did was um, on the advice of a friend, I read the book Compounding the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It's a very short book. Like, honestly, the audio book was less than an hour. Um, I want to say it was like a half hour. That led me to ask some potentially really hard questions of and hard in the fact that it makes me very vulnerable. And I trusted some friends and my own kids to answer them. Um, because I wanted that feedback because I can't make change. Sometimes I'm so close to my own situation. Like I need the outside perspective or insight to help me change, to grow and be, get better. So I emailed several, several friends and my kids and a couple of people have emailed me back. And if you have answers for me down below, based on what you know, go ahead, throw them down there. Or you can message me on Instagram at his princess Kelly or whatever. Like um, the questions are, is how do I show up to you? How do I show up? What do you think are my strengths? In what areas do you think I sabotage myself? What's one thing I can stop doing that would benefit me the most? And what's one thing I should start doing? So now what's interesting about that is I've had two friends email me back and I've had my daughter email me back. It's funny that my daughter would message me. And all three of them are very similar. And I'm not overly... That's so funny. Um, one moment, please. I apologize. I had a text I had to take care of. Um, and I don't remember. So, yeah. So, um, one of the things that all three of my friends have said is basically I overschedule myself and I end up spiraling down where I'm frustrated and I'm exhausted and then I end up sick and I... And my daughter pointed out, like, when you're then, when I'm in that spot, then I, I get frustrated with them and I get angry and I'm the mean, I'm like, I'm mad and I'm not really mad, um, but I tend to yell more and be short tempered about things. And it's really hard. Um, but I kind of needed to hear her and she, she's like, mom, it's okay to say no to us. It's okay to say, no, I can't drive you there. Or to say, that doesn't work with my schedule. Like, can we, like, um, you know, where I've been very focused. So it, it was, it's was it been interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing some of the other answers. Um, I will likely listen to the book again. Um, because I feel like a book like that, you, you almost have to listen to more than once to get things out of it. So, yeah. So that's been kind of where I'm at. Um, getting ready for StitchCon. Um, you know, I have this StitchCon anxiety, like I always get, but not so bad. But I'm super excited. Um, so for those of you who have been with me forever, know that I used to do a floss tube as well with Stitch Life Magazine. And if you've watched Stitch Life Magazine's floss tube, Two of the people on the show were Julie and Kim. Well, Julie and Kim are able to come to StitchCon Weekend B. So we're finally, the three of us are going to get to meet in person. Julie and Kim have met in person. Um, I haven't met either one of them in person. I've known them for absolutely years, like literally years. And so I am super, 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 super excited. Um, and then like, I get to see my friend Stephanie and my friend Nicole, who we have all set together since the first dish con that I went to. Uh, so I, and then Kim's friend, Tanya, who I've become friends with is coming and I'm, I'm really, really excited about it, but there's that anxiety. And like, I know that like, I don't have the bandwidth right now to put together gifts for my table mates. And I would really like to 
considering they're all really good friends of mine, but I'm like, I don't even know where to begin at this point because I don't have the bandwidth to put together um, like beautiful bags. Like Tanya makes beautiful bags. And um, if you have not checked out her bags, her bags, she's on Facebook and she's needle and bones. I'll try to pop her down below. You all know I'm terrible at that, but I'll try. Um, so like, I don't know. I don't know. I like, so we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll try and come up with something. I don't know. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not even putting on the pressure of doing a small for the smalls exchange. I'm not doing it. Nope. I'm not going to worry about floss drops. I'm not going to worry about like any of it. Like I, I'm literally, I am taking Jesse from Bobo Stitches um, advice from last year. And that's, it's okay not to do everything. It's okay. Um, And with everything going on lately, I, I just, I could stress myself out in the next two weeks and I could come up with something, but no. No. So, um, I do have some stitchy kindness. I won a, I actually won two prizes from Denise at Black Ribbon Stitch Studio. If you don't follow Denise, I, I, I don't know what, I don't know what you're doing with your life. She's super, super sweet. I love watching her floss tube. She's one of the floss tube people that really and truly I want to meet in person and just give the biggest hug to. Um, because I feel like I know her. I, I feel like we're like long lost friends. Uh, so, so I won two giveaways. Yay me. And they're fantastic. I love them so much. The first one is the Stackables June from It's So Emma at Fat Quarter Shop. It's so simple. It's so simple, but it's so cute. And it's so me. And it will look absolutely adorable on my front door. Okay. Absolutely adorable. The other one are Star Spangled Ornaments by It's So Emma at the Fat Quarter Shop. You'll know that Denise does um, a lot with Fat Quarter Shop. I'm not sure what her partnership or affiliation with them is. Whatever it is, I hope she stays in it forever because I love it. And I get the benefits at times. And I love that. Um, these are so cute. They're in little tart tins. How cute is that? Um, these will look adorable on my office ficus. We all know about my office ficus. If I get a job as a referee, my ficus goes with me. Where I go, the ficus goes. Maybe not. I'll have to find something else to decorate. Whatever. We'll make it work. I'll make it work. Okay, so I got those. So yay for that. Um, I also bought a pattern. So there's my haul. I bought Owl Forest pattern. Um, I did the instant download. I did not buy the floss. I probably should have, but I feel like I'm going to end up changing colors anyways. So there was no point. But I bought the, it's called Harvest Seasoned Cucumbers. But it's got a jar of pickles. If you know, you know. You know, I am a pickle person. I am the pickle friend. Every friendship has one person who doesn't really like pickles and one person who will drink pickle juice straight out of the jar. I am the pickle juice out of the jar, girl. I love pickles. I also love green olives. I don't know. I'm just built that way. Um, maybe it's the Polish in me. I don't know. I don't know, but I do. Jasmine is my ride or die in the program. You all like you all. I feel like you all know Jasmine, and I know none of you do, but I feel like you should because I talk about her all the time. Jasmine and I would literally get a jar of pickles some weeks during class when we knew we were stressed out, and we would literally sit and eat cocktail dill pickles during class out of the jar. Not even going to lie. Mm -hmm. So I am going to stitch the pickle sal. The pickle, um, the pickle sampler is what I'm affectionately calling it um, for Jasmine. So I know that when I'm at StitchCon, I am going to need to pick up more. I may take that pattern to StitchCon to pick up the flosses for a conversion. Um, because like I said, I want it to look more pickly, more like pickles. 
<laughs> and I know, like, I would love to use a floss that's named Pickle. But I can't pull that out of that sampler because I don't know how much of it I'm going to need. So I'm going to need more pickle floss or more greens. And I cannot wait. I know. I'm strange. We, we all know this. Okay. So the other project, I posted a separate floss tube on this. And I keep forgetting. I forgot to talk about it last week. Um, I am going to start a sampler about me. I'm going to start the Kelly Regal Green Sampler because I think samplers are really cool. And I think it would be really cool that in 100 years, somebody stitches the, the Kelly Regal Green 2024 sampler. I mean, people are stitching other people's samplers and they don't know them. So why not stitch the Kelly Regal Green sampler? The other thing is I'm going to also do one for each of the kids. Now, I am limiting my fabric. I talked about this before, that there is a woman, and she has an Instagram, and if I can figure out her Instagram handle, I'm never going to be able to figure out who am I lying to. I, I probably will never be able to figure out, remember which person it is. She does a family sampler, but on her, she does like a little hexagon motif every year. She figures out something special, and like... The one year her t she has either twins or triplets, and the one year she um, used part of their hair because they got their first haircut, and she stitched with that. I'm not gonna go to that extreme, because although I will tell you not not on purpose, most of my stitching does include dog hair, not on purpose, but it does. And to be fair, because my hair falls out, it, it, it just, I don't know how to stop that. If anybody's got any hair, hair tips, because my hair's like, as I'm getting older, it's thinning. I used to have really, really thick hair, and now not so much. So if you have tips, put them down below. But, so many of my projects also have my own hair in them. Again, not purposefully. Just happens. Okay. So we're going to start the It's All About Me sampler. You can stitch. You don't have to stitch the Kelly Regal Green sampler. If you would like to stitch the Kelly Regal Green sampler, you let me know. You let me know and I will hook you up with a pattern. But I think that it is important that as part of our, and I want to do one for each of the, the twins too. Uh, each of my kids. So being in the boy child. So. I think it's important that our stitching at some point reflects who we are and that's something to pass down. And it doesn't have to say your actual name on it. So this month, my, so I'm going to break it down into, into goals. So my goal, is, first of all, as far as my size, I want it to fit mine. You have to figure out how big you want to put it. Like some of us don't, some of us like smalls. Some of us, and samplers can be super small. Samplers can be super big. And I don't mind a big ass project. We all know this. Like clearly I don't have a problem stitching a big ass proper project for those. The issue is I only have limited wall space, unfortunately. So I'm thinking that I want to keep my samplers for me and the kids. So I'm going to end up with three of them eventually. That each one of them will either be able to fit in an 18 by, in a standard frame. So I'm thinking either 11 by 14 or 18 by 20. Um, what I want to do is go to the store and maybe pull each of one of those. Although, what do I have right here? This is the certificate size. And this isn't a bad size. I had to scan in one of my certificates that I had earned um, for the job. Okay, so this is only an 8 by 10. Only an 8 by 10. That's not right. Okay, so without the mat, this is a 10 by 13. So an 11 by 14 would be slightly bigger than this. This is an inexpensive frame from Walmart. I want to say it was like a $4 frame. Okay. This is a great size. This is a great size. So if I kept them three, you know, because I'm going to do the two kids and myself. If I kept 
Or should I just do like the Regal Green family, like the three of us? Like just do one big sampler for the three of us. No. We're going to do them individually. We're individual people. No. Okay. I, later on the road, I might do one for all three of us, like as our family. But right now, we're going to focus on individual samplers. This is a great size. So I will probably do... I may do this size or I may go bump it up to an 11 by 14. Um, so I said, if, if we start off there, then every sample, I also have this book. So if anybody needs any help with anything and I have wind stitch, so I'm happy to chart whatever, um, as my time allows, um, this book is a great resource and I, I got mine off of Etsy. I know it's still in print. It's a, it was a little hard to come by. It's from Brenda Keys. Um, but there's all sorts of like little motifs. Like there's a whole section on animals. There's a whole section on plants and birds and, um, there's alphabets in here. There's ships, there's Quaker motifs. There's little corner medallions. I mean, it's like, it's, it's actually a really good book if you, um, are looking for a good it's got a bunch of houses in it um now they are not very modern i i, I don't know how to say that they are a little bit more old-fashioned which makes sense given who wrote it and what it's titled okay okay so i'm going to start off with doing mine my goal this month is to find my fabric, which I think I'm just going to use an 18 count Ada. I was debating doing a linen, but then I would have to buy something. And um, I'd rather use what I have on hand. So I have some 18 count Ada. I might dye it, which would be fine. I have some writ dye. Um, and to pick an alphabet. Because every sampler's got an alphabet. We all know that. That's, you know, you either love them or uh, hate them. I have chosen to use the ASL finger spelling alphabet for one of my alphabets. That's not to say I won't do a second alphabet, but at least for the one, I'm going to do the ASL alphabet. Um, I know that on mine, I will be including something Jeep related. We all know that. There will be dogs on mine. I will include something about my kids on there. I will probably include daisies. Um, whatever. Um, the other, so I'm thinking my goal was to put the alphabet kind of near the top, but I may leave room for like a, a top border so that, um, so either pick your alphabet or pick your, your border. Um, I know that in the center, I'm going to put a big old house. I'm actually thinking of putting the Supreme Court building. The U.S. Supreme Court for well, just because it's law related and and that um, my demons are going to start singing. Okay, so if you would like to join me, we're going to use hashtag It's All About Me Sal. All about me Sal, and I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. It's a great way to use up those favorite flosses. That you, you're like, I, I don't know what project to use this on, but I love this. You know, like, and, and the other part of that is, okay, maybe you have a pattern that you love, like, parts of it, but you don't really want to stitch the whole thing. But, like, there's a part out in there that, like, is meaningful. Like, okay, I may take the pickle jar off the owl floors embroidery piece and stitch it on my sampler. I may put a Jeep on there. Okay, I'm gonna put like something Jeep related. Um, you know, it, it maybe you put on a pride flag. I, I don't. Maybe you put on an American flag. Maybe you put on a no flag at all. I don't know. I just think it's really a great idea, and what a legacy to leave. Um, and who knows? In a hundred years, when we're all dead and gone. I mean, I'm 52. It's not like I'm gonna live to be 152. It, like, it, it's not gonna happen. Um, I mean, I suppose it's possible, but realistically, it's not going to happen. Maybe in a hundred years, somebody stitches my sampler because they think it's really cool. I don't know. It'd be really fun, wouldn't it? 
somebody would have to rechart it. Like, I might, maybe I'll put the Bigfoot on there. I don't know, because I love Bigfoot. I don't know. We haven't gotten that far yet. Okay, so we're going to pick our, so remember, we're going to pick our alphabet, potentially a border, and we're going to pick our fabric. That's our goal for June. We have all month. It's okay. Let's just do this. Okay. So I did work out a little bit on the peppermint purple cell from 2021. Don't judge me. I worked on the split block. My brain is not figuring out the rhythm to it yet. So we didn't make it any farther than that, which means I'm now behind to have it done if I do a block a week. So we got to get that. Okay. Then, today, these are in no order that I worked on them because I don't keep track of that. And sometimes I work on my the same thing multiple days and who knows. Okay, so today I pulled out the Deadly Aquarium cell from Lola Crow, which my daughter thinks is, is awesome. And I think my daughter's awesome. I'm stitching this on a 36 count linen in the color Glacier from Be Stitch Me Fabric. I won this from her. I love this fabric. I love the color. Linen is still tricky to me sometimes. Um, but this is a good li linen. It's not like a crazy, crazy linen. Um, but I realized that today somehow, because counting is hard, I have misstitched something and I, I don't know. I don't know how. And I don't have the bandwidth right now to figure it out. So this is going in time, which really sucks because the third, the second piece was just dropped on Friday. And she does almost a weekly drop. It's crazy. Now her pieces, once you get the frame in, the little individual pieces aren't so far haven't been crazy as far as the stitch numbers. And it would be totally doable. But I don't have my frame done. And here's the problem with the two. Okay, so here's where we're at. And somewhere I've I've messed up. I don't know if I've stitched too many of these dark brown or if I didn't stitch up enough this black line so that this is too low. I, I don't know. Is it fixable? Yeah. But I'm not sure how much frogging I need to do yet. So here's the problem. The two pieces that have come out, the frame goes this way. It's like three panels to to see into the aquarium, right? The the two pieces that have come out go in the third panel. This is why so many of my cells from 2021 are not finished is because I would mess up on something early on and it would go into timeout and then I didn't pick it back up because 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 so this is going in timeout for now. I'm not allowed to forget about it, though. It can only stay. I'm only allowing myself to leave it in timeout for up to two weeks. Which really, I think that's a little bit long. I think by next weekend, I should have to pull this back out and figure it out. But I'm going to give myself two weeks as of right now, just in case. Okay. So then, I started something new, only because Stitch Cut is coming up, and I when I bought the fabric and I showed the project to Susan at, at Keepsake, she helped me pick out the fabric and do the math and everything, because mathing sometimes is hard. Um, I am stitching lavender and lace. Celtic Noel smushed together with a Christmas tree. Also from Lavender Lace. Okay, so here's what we got. Okay. So she's normally stitched on 28 count. This is stitched on 28 count. This is she's stitched on 32 count. I'm not stitching the borders. 
I I may take this border and put it underneath them to kind of anchor it. I'm not sure yet. I am changing what she's holding in her hand. She's not going to hold the wreath. That's like, no. She's going to end up holding a string of popcorn. So they're going to look like she's helping them decorate the tree. Because that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Because the coloring on the two kids is very much like my twins. And I just think that would be a gorgeous piece. It would also complement Santa, the Santa piece that I'm doing. Okay. So Susan helped me do the math. And then I promptly messed it up on the fabric, but we won't tell Susan that. I didn't mess it up in a bad way, okay? I didn't mess it up in a bad way. Let's just throw that back out there. I didn't mess it up in a bad way. And she helped me pick out the fabric so that it would also complement the piece of fabric that oh, that Santa is on. My dingling dogs are chasing and wrestling each other as if they are, like, members of the WWE or WWF whatever it is the Worldwide Wrestling Association Jokers and now because the two big ones are wrestling Nigel the little dog wants to wrestle the big dogs does he not know he's like a fraction of their size Link. Anyways, back to back to this mashup. Okay, so Susan was like, "Yeah, you'll have to bring it to StitchCon and show me your progress." That was going to be really hard because I hadn't started it. Do I have all of the flosses in the beads? I actually do. I have the beads in my sewing kit. That is not sitting very well right now, but what? Okay. I have all the beads, all, all the beads and stuff. I have all the Kleenex. I, okay. <coughs> oh, I forgot to put this one. Um, it was going to be really hard to show her other than going, Look, I have the floss and the beads now, too. The fabric's still really pretty. Okay, so this was one of my six starts for the year that I had slated to start this year. It's We've had some un, like some starts that I hadn't planned. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm getting a little nervous about my 24 and 24, though. Not going to be, not going to lie. Getting a little nervous about it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um. Okay, so I know. It's a huge start. I know. You're in awe, right? What sucks is that these little stitches actually blend in with my fabric. So I may end up, I know the pattern doesn't call for any back stitching down here. I think I may end up having to do some. I'm going to wait till the whole piece is done. But I'm stitching, right now we're just working on this little popcorn bowl down here. And had I realized... So I'm still debating. So the stripe on the popcorn bowl on the bowl is red. I have a big bowl like that. That was my grandmother's, but the stripes on it are blue. The problem is, is there's no other blue in this pattern. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it. I debated like frogging them out and making it the blue bowl, but I think I'm just going to leave it. So we did technically start it. I know. Um, it would be very helpful if I took the patterns over to FedEx, Kinko, and copied them. Because what I did right now is I copied it on my little, like, printer scanner. Like, just a section of it. And actually, because I just changed the ink, it's not too bad. Um, So I guess for now, I could get away with it and not worry about it. Okay, there's more. For somebody who lost her stitchy bug, you'd think I, I, I've actually stitched quite a bit, which is kind of funny. Okay, in here is my mirror, my other mirror. Well, this is a mirror bill, yeah. Those are lavender and lace, which if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't lavender and lace Nora Corbett's mom? I think it is. 
which is pretty freaking impressive. Okay, so in here is Lady Justice. I am stitching this to go in my office because she's beautiful. I, if you guys recall, I ordered this pattern and it was actually delivered to my house the day that Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed. I had wanted to stitch it and I was going to start it, stitch it then, but then I was like, I can't. I can't because I can't get past the colors because I'm goofy. Okay, if you're new here, I have issues. Okay. She's the Lady Justice. She's holding the scales of justice. She's using the, you know, all of that, right? Every justice I know, their robe is black. Every justice. I don't know a single justice in any court, anywhere in the world, actually, that isn't black. Not that I know them all, but like the few countries that I do know, all the judges wear black robes. And here in the U.S., law is represented by the color purple. Do we see the colors? Her colors are beautiful, but that doesn't scream Lady Justice to me. A part of the issue is going to be, now that I realize it, is the scales of justice may blend in. So I don't remember what color I've adapted those to. Whatever. We're figuring it out as we go. Uh, I worked with another stitcher named Abby on the conversion. And so far, I'm really liking it. I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count Lugana from Picture This Plus in the color Heroic. This fabric color is perfection. Um, I Like I said before, I think I'm going to have to order another piece to do Lady of the Flag for my office and then to also do um, Queen of Peace and Queen of Freedom. I think I've managed to be able to borrow all, like the other, the Queen of Freedom and Queen of Peace. Um, and that will be fantastic. And I spent a boatload on Lady of the Flag. Don't hate me. Okay. So we've been working on just to make sure the colors are good. And this is where we're at. This is her booty, essentially. And that's her booty bow. It's actually three shades of black and gray already. I do have some Crinex or Petite Treasure braids that I need to order and have it and at this point I'm just gonna check and see if they have it at um at StitchCon at um keepsakes when I go down for StitchCon. Um because if I have to buy the pickle flosses, what's a few Crinex? I do have some of the Crinex, but not all of them. So she is going to be gorgeous and sparkly as she should. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next up is my epic, wonderful world of Oz. Okay. My center. So this is piece was in part inspired by Pam from Just Keep Stitching. And it's a piece that she did for Stephanie. I had most of the Brooks books character because at one point I was stitching them for my former business partner who loved the Wizard of Oz. Well, when we parted ways, I was like, yeah, I don't have to stitch these. And they've been sitting in my pile. Like, I want to stitch them, but Wizard of Oz is not, like, one of my favorites. Like, I like it, but it's not, like, it's not one of my favorites. No shade to those who love it, okay? Excuse me for that. I was thirsty. Um... But those of you who have been with me for a while now know that our program has a sub, an SI who's like a teacher's assistant aide and tutor. Her name is Erin. And Erin also um, kind of coordinates our deaf, deaf blind club in the area. And 
I, without Jasmine and Aaron, I would not have made it through the pro program. I would have given up um, because several people in my life didn't really support my goal and made me feel bad about it. And then it is a very difficult program. And as our provost, provost has said, it's, it's basically the hardest program in the college that the college has to offer. Um, and that says a lot. So um, when I went to Erin's house for Christmas, I realized that she is a Wizard of Oz fan. She loves it. Her whole living room is done in Wizard of Oz. She has a special Christmas tree of all Wizard of Oz. So then I went, oh my God. And then I realized that there were a couple more characters that I didn't have of the Brooks Books patterns, and I probably bought those. And then I found this piece. Because while I like the Satsuma Street piece that um, for Oz that Pam used, it wasn't necessarily speaking to me. And then I found this one on Etsy. And I believe it's by Tiki Stitchery. I think. And this is the print out, print out of the picture. And that's what's going in the center of mine. Because it's freaking awesome. And this alone would be an amazing gift, right? So I'm stitching this on an unknown count, even weave. And the center I'm stitching two over two. Okay. Along the outside border, I am putting all of the Brooks Books characters. Because I now have them all. I'm doing them one over one. And then on there, I'm adding the phrase, which I found out is actually from the Wizard of Oz book. Because I was like, who said this quote? And I Googled it. It's from the book. How freaking amazing is that? Because it's the perfect quote. And it says, it's not where you go. It's who you meet along the way. Is that not the most amazing quote for this piece, knowing who it's going to? So this piece I love to work on. I will tell you that my brain does not, I can't switch from working on the centerpiece to the character and going from one over one to two over two. I, it's a state, like I can't do it in the same, now I can go from one on one on this piece to another piece and do two over two or work on Ada and not have that problem. I can't do it on the same piece. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so this last week, this is where we're at. I started to fill in the book pages. I've not done any of the back stitching, and there's supposed to be some red French knots. I actually may do them as red seed beads so that they have a little bit more sparkle to them. There is some back stitching in the center square. I have not done any of it. Okay, so I've done some pages down here. I know, a little exciting, right? What is hysterical to me are the scarecrow's legs. And Jessica said it too. Okay, so there's a few more blue stitches that need to go in here. But other than that, he's up. I've started to put in his shirt, but both his little legs are basically done. There's like three stitches. I'll get them done, whatever. Okay, so that's his waist. But every time Jessica sees it, now she's got me singing it too, is Cotton Eye Joe. That's all you can think of with the little cowboy boats. Cotton Eye Joe. I said what I said. Cotton Eye Joe. Is that not going to be freaking fantastic? Ugh. I love stitching on this. I love the bright colors. I love that. Like, it's just, it brings me, it, it, it makes my heart happy. Almost as happy as when I worked on Rosie. I love this piece. Love this piece. Okay. So then, the only other thing that I have worked on. I know. It's pretty hard impression considering I really did lose my stitchy bucket. I'm like, no, whatever. Okay. So, um, tonight I still have to do two things. Shh. I totally forgot about the laptop. I'll get it done. I'll get it done. I always do. Okay. Okay. This piece is for my friend's mom. It's the Kay and Dennis piece. 
It is a picture of Kay and Dennis. Um, we are um, just shy of 25%. I'm like at 24.68% or something crazy. Okay. The problem was, so last night I went to, so last night, the other night I was stitching on it in the Jeep at night because I was waiting for the boy child to get out of work. And I don't, I don't know how to, you know, the dome light, there should be a switch somewhere to turn on the dome light, right? I can't figure out where it is in my Jeep. I know that if I open the door, the dome light turns on. But I can't find the switch to just, like, randomly turn on the dome light. I don't know. So stitching at night is a little difficult in the Jeep because then I have to use the flashlight off my phone and stuff uh, because my little head, like, neck light, they needed to be charged, and I didn't realize that. Um, so he has some ninja stitches in here. He looks kind of blotchy. Like, that's the color. Like, I... Okay, um, so I couldn't work on filling in the little ninja stitches and stuff, and I was like, okay, what do I do? So I came over, and I worked on his suit jacket. This is actually the, the far side of the picture. So this is literally how wide it will be. And I want to say that this is pretty much the bottom. So this is pretty much what K, how big K and Dennis will be. So I live it. So, I will continue to work on Kate and Dennis. Kate and Dennis is going to have to go to StitchCon with me. And that's okay. So, for WIPCO for June, Jessie called the numbers. I think we talked about this. Um, she called number two. Number two for me was the ant placemats, but I finished those already. So, that got crossed off. My other square is 25. Which in the past would have been um, the map cell from Ink Circles. And I started that for my son, and that's fine. But him and I were talking, and um, we're to switch the map to Monopoly. Because Monopoly is on my 24 and 24, and so then I can kind of double dip on the projects. If I could get going on Monopoly and get it done early, in, like this time in June, for the June call, um, and then next time for when it's called, then maybe I will work on the map, but I, I don't think I'm going to finish it this month. Stranger things have happened, maybe it will happen, but this is where we're at. If you recall, um, I need to trim up some threads. I have changed all of the um, places. To okay, I changed them to music places to music instruments. Um, so I do still have I didn't realize I still had some of those to put like the names in. <laughs> I thought I was a little bit farther along. Okay, so um, I have it just. Oh, I even have my highlighter in there. Woohoo! Yay, me. Um, sometimes hi highlighters are very hard to find in my house. Um, and for a while there, we had the highlighters that kind of like, I don't know, they sort of melted as you used them. And you had to like turn them like they were a crayon. I don't like those. I am like old school highlighter. Although I do like my pink ones. I, I want an old school highlighter. I, I don't care what cut, like the pink, the blue, like that doesn't bother me. But I don't want one of these newfangled twisty highlighter bull, like the no, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so all right, so I have to need more work. Um, I am using the original pattern that was released back in like the 1900s. I know, isn't that fun to say? Um, and then. I am so grateful to Mary. Mary? 
I think it was Mary who sent this to me. Um, it is an older pattern. It is perfect because like instead of railroads, um, I'm doing like Carnegie Hall. What is, I have it written on the back. Like I write notes everywhere. It's great. Um, but you know, I'm over my world. See, I have my notes. Okay. So, um, so I know my, that the railroads I'm turning into places like Carnegie Hall, Grand Old Opry. Opry. So I'm actually going to see if like, I can't get this piano to fit in there. I'm not going to put an instrument on every square because dear God in heaven, no. Um, I love my son, but no. Um, plus, this doesn't have all of the instruments that are on here. That's okay. So what I do want to do, though, is ideally put the piano for the railroads. And then... Um, Like they have the, he has a French horn. Um, so for chant, like for, what is it? For the utilities, they're going to be um, music stores up here that we use. So, cause there's, is there two utilities? I don't know because that piece of paper isn't, doesn't seem to be in here. Oh, duh. if I just flip over my other piece of paper, I would have it. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Okay, so there's two utilities, and in the utilities, we're going to do treble and bass. So that shouldn't be hard to chart, even though there isn't one in on here. My railroads are Carnegie Hall, Sydney Opera, the Grand Old Opera, and the Fillmore. And those will hopefully be the little grand piano. For luxury tax and income taxes, those are our local music shops. So potentially for the music shops, um, I could use the French horn one if it's small enough. And then for free parking, it will be community concerts and the jail will actually be um, the practice room. So for the practice room... I don't know because I thought that maybe there would be a music stand in here, but there's not. I don't know. So we'll figure it out. But the other part of that is I would love to just stitch this separately for an ornament for him. So lots of work to be done on Monopoly. A lot more than I thought, sadly. Um. Dude, I am super prepared in here. I didn't even realize, like, these are my favorite scissors. Not my favorite scissors. These are, like, a great pair of scissors with my scissor fob that I made. Which you can't even tell because, like, my floss is all jangly. Um, although most of that floss I could probably take out of there now that I've done a lot of the squares. But, so, I mean, like, I'm super prepared in here if I, like, if I just get off my butt and work on it um so this is one of my 24 and 24s i could probably even like trim down my fabric a little bit but i'm not going to right now um i have a needle yeah so this is um this is my whip go goal for june so for june i'd like to get that like i don't know what I'd like to do is be able to get the rest of the names on the streets. Holy cow, thought those were done. And then maybe do, um, maybe if I could get, so if I could get the rest of this, I've got, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares where I have to do the um the name of the place and the price so if i could get those done and then if i could get like the ghost square 
like get the four corners done and maybe even like the centerpiece is going to be kind of big because that's where it says monopoly and it's got the stu the two squares for the cards for community and chance right so i don't know i'll have to let you know how i figure this out to finish this No, I'm saying we'll get it. It'll it'll be okay. I'm getting a little nervous because K and Dennis aren't going as fast as I thought. I would be making progress. Rosie took me longer into the year because I was so sick that that kind of threw things off. But then I was doing super, super well in my 24 and 24, if you guys remember. Um, let me see, sorry for the shaking. I was doing really, really well. And I've actually finished 13 out of 24 things. Well, 13 out of 25, because I thought one was on the list, but it's not. But like Kay and Dennis has still got a long way to go. Oz has still got quite a bit. Um, now I'm behind on Peppermint Purple. Now, again, Mermaid Santa is not that far off, but I'm struggling with the back stitching. Four of the things are ornaments, but I've still got, and then I've got half, 50% of the Modern Folk Embroidery Fruits of Plenty sale to finish. So I've still got some pretty big, and the space sale is at over 50%, but I've still got some really big pieces left on my 24 and 24. And we're now into June. So, like, this is, like, almost the halfway part point. So, I feel like... I feel like I've knocked out a lot of those small things. But now I'm, in like, starting to feel the pressure to get the rest of it done. It will happen. It will be okay. Just keep telling me that. Maybe I'll believe you. I'm not sure I believe me. Um... So, anyways, this is longer than I thought it would be. So, remember, you are smart. You are beautiful. You are loved. You are cherished. You are strong. You are needed. You are wanted. You matter. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I will catch you next week. Remember, I love you. And if you need anything, check me out at His Princess Kelly on Instagram. That's probably the easiest way. Just send me a message and we'll we'll get you straight with whatever you need. So with that, good night and have fun.